everybody, this is Sheila Aliens. Today is September 22nd, 2011. And tomorrow, the 23rd, is when the UARS satellite is expected to make landfall anywhere between Canada and South America. So, right now the UARS website is down, not working. I mean, we can cry conspiracy, but it might be because there's a lot of people on it right now, and I would think that NASA would go ahead and fix that server issue because don't we deserve to see where this thing is? I think we do, but it's probably, they just got overloaded and they're probably not going to bother to fix it, so that's what we're working with right there. And there's nothing we can do about it, so that's what we're working with. So the the N2YO website is up, but the UARS tracker is not. But NASA's text updates are working. As of 7 a.m. September 22, 2011, the orbit of UARS was 115 miles by 120 miles. Re-entry is expected sometime during the afternoon of September 23rd, Eastern Daylight Time. The satellite will not be passing over North America during that time period. It is still too early to predict the time and location of re-entry with any more certainty, but predictions will become more refined in the next 24 to 36 hours. So that's our only form of up-to-the-minute information, because the live tracker is not working. I can't get it to work, so whatever. That's just a quick update for you guys, and be on the lookout for that. They said tomorrow, during the afternoon of September 23rd, and you might want to be looking out tonight too in case there's maybe some little pieces of it. Maybe there'll be some type of light show. And while I'm at it, I just want to mention that they have something called an Ion Beam Shepherd to move giant space debris wherever they want to move it to. And it's just that. It's a plasma ion beam. And they have successfully tested it and everything. So you might want to look into that. The Ion Beam Shepherd. There's some presentation videos on YouTube. And I don't know why they wouldn't do that if they had so many years of knowing that this thing was going to come down, that they didn't do anything about it. I mean, since 2005, they could have done something. They do have a department for orbital space debris mitigation, but they're not doing their fucking job, that's for sure. So one conspiracy theory would be that this has something to do with an asteroid, 2007 TD, which will make its closest approach According to NASA, on the 22nd, everybody online thinks it's the 23rd. Either way, it's pretty damn close, 22nd, 23rd. And it's very close to us, 0 0.016 astronomical units. Estimated diameter, 36 meters to 79 meters. So, maybe they're expecting some pieces of that? I don't know. Now let's just go over some of the ways that they can mitigate space debris or asteroids that are going to be falling down to Earth. First of all, they have a chemical rocket propulsion, wherein a chemical rocket is attached to the asteroid or space debris and ignited. The solar sail. A solar sail is attached to the near-Earth object and effectively increases its cross-sectional area. This, in turn, increases the effect of solar pressure on the NEO. So they've had a long time to work on this, and they could have changed its path by now. Solar ablation. A series of mirrors and lenses focus sunlight onto the NEO, causing material on the NEO surface to be expelled. Laser ablation. A spacecraft focuses a high-energy laser on the near-Earth object, causing the material on the surface of the NEO to heat up and be expelled from the surface. 
high ISP rocket propulsion. A high specific impulse rocket is attached to the asteroid and fires its engines over an extended period of time. See, they can just move it out of the way like that with little rockets. Just like the ISS moves, they could have attached separate boosters on this thing to steer it so it doesn't fall over us. Kinetic impactor. A spacecraft traveling at high relative velocity is impacted into the object. Then there's the NEO net, and I don't know what that is, and I don't know what magnetic flux compression is, but obviously they have some means to mitigate this if they choose to. And I'm sure not one single person in the mainstream media is going to be asking NASA why they didn't do that for the UARS. When it comes to our safety, they just don't give a fuck. And everybody be safe and keep an eye out for that. Much love. Meow. Yeah.